Lord, I pray that thou will help me that I may not move out of the way, but that thou will filter thy word through my mind and help me that I may understand what the duty and responsibility of standing before your people, what it means. Lord, at the end, you will get the glory and the praise. We are here tonight, Lord, to worship you. We are here to learn of you. We are here to understand your perfect and divine will. So, Lord, we ask you that thou will teach us in your own way. And we give you thanks for these and other blessings. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. The topic of the convention is life, death, eternal life, and eternal death. Last night we dealt with the uh, life that God had given to man. And we looked at how God had prepared all things. And he had prepared the Garden of Eden, especially for the man that he made. And God placed him in the Garden for a purpose. And we focused last night on the origin of evil. The first sinner, which was Lucifer. And he sinned against God and he was being dethroned. And he has been fighting against God from the time he had been thrown off his duty. And he will fight until the day that Jesus Christ gets hold of him. And have him bound with a chain. And it's important that we understand that he is a person. The devil is a person. God is a person. And Jesus is a person. And the Holy Spirit is a person. Somebody may say, no, God is a spirit. But God speaks. And God is all powerful. And his son Jesus Christ came out from him. And we learn about the incarnation, which some people don't believe in. But we believe that Jesus was before Abraham. And God has allowed him to be born as a little baby, like any ordinary little baby. And he grew up. God said it was necessary that he became like one of his brethren. The Bible tells us that between God and man we have the man Christ Jesus. So Christ has taken to heaven within his manhood. Christ is not in heaven as a spirit. He is there as a man. He is there as our high priest. And we would like to understand that there is something about Jesus different to all the other prophets. While he was here on earth, he was a prophet. He died for the sin of the world and he became the high priest. And today he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he is there making intercession. <coughs> For mankind. He is making a pleading to God for you and I as we pray to God. We pray to God through Jesus Christ. And I believe that he is also interceding to the Father for those who have not yet committed their life to him. For no way a man can be saved except he give acknowledgement to Jesus Christ as the only Savior. For Jesus said, no man can come to the Father but by him, only through him. 
He said, I am the door. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. That's who he is. He is the one that brings salvation. It is Jesus alone that could bring salvation. He died in our stead on the tree. Died to give us that relief from condemnation. Not only for a time, but through eternity. And that is why we worship him. We recognize the fact that we were condemned as a result of what we heard last night about the disobedience of man. Man broke the command of God. As a result of that, the sentence of death was passed upon all men. But Jesus Christ came to liberate us from the bondage of sin and death and to give us hope of eternal life. And that is why we worship Him. That is why we praise Him. That is why we say nice things about Him because He's worthy. The man that knows what it means to be liberated from the bondage of sin must praise God. If you can't praise God, it simply means that you have got nothing to praise Him for. But when you save your soul, and you know how condemned you were, and how He stood in your place, you must say thanks to Him. Unreservedly, you praise Him, for He's worthy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, I will praise Him with every breath that I take. I will praise Him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now last night we looked on uh, chapter 3 of uh, Genesis, um, uh, chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3. And we looked on uh, uh, in chapter 2 and the uh, verse 7, where God breathed his breath in man and man became a living soul. Now we did say last night that uh, the, 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 the fact that man had broken the instructions of God yeah. and God stated that the day he eat of that tree he shall surely die and we looked on the length of time that Adam lived after he ate that fruit from that tree he lived approximately 900 years after that but he died so man was made to live forever yes. if he had not broken the command of God. Yes. And we want to look at something here where the devil is an adversary of God. He's an enemy of God. He rebelled against God. And every spirit of rebellion today is of the devil. Amen. He is a rebellious creature from the yes. beginning. He rebelled against God yes. and he teaches man to be rebellious. Yes. Every spirit of rebellion that rises up, even in the church, it is of the devil Amen. and it must be condemned. Amen. There's no sweet talk about it. No. The devil wants man to be rebellious yes. against everything that God has set in place. Amen. War against it. It's no good. Yes. That is exactly what he got man to do. And we looked last night on the fact that he stated to the man, yes. to the woman, thou shalt not surely die. Mm -hmm. When God said, you shall surely die, yes. so the devil is trying to make God a liar. Yes. Yes. You know, Jesus said, he had been alive from when? From the beginning, he is the author of lies. Yes. And every person that tells lies is of the devil, the Bible yes. said. The Bible said, lying lips are abomination to God. You know, the devil can make man get in the habit of telling lies that even when he can tell the truth to deliver himself, he tell a lie. The devil allowed man to become a compulsive liar. Yes. Now, in chapter 3, we looked last night on how 
the devil picked up the conversation with Eve. In verse 3, and the middle of verse 3 it said, Ye shall not eat. Yeah? Ye shall not eat. Now, and the serpent said unto the woman, ah, uh, verse 4 rather, I'm sorry, verse 4. Ye shall not eat. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, thou then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now, let me just bring something to your attention how the action of the devil spills from one generation to another and will go on until Jesus Christ comes. <clears throat> but such changes can take place in the life of a person when Jesus Christ comes in. No moral standards can make a man be qualified to have right to God. No education, no parental upbringing, no good intention, only when the life is surrendered to Jesus Christ. When he is in control of the life and even when we commit ourselves to him, we've got to have that personal relationship which you were talking about Richard. You've got to know him for yourself. Amen. You've got to be acquainted with him. Amen. You must feel his presence with you Amen. wherever you go. Not what somebody tells you. Amen. You must learn to know him for yourself. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. When you know the way you are going, nobody can twist you and turn you. There's a lot of people that are being fooled today. Have you ever had experience of not knowing where you're going? And you stop and you ask somebody? And they're so frightened that they, 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 they're not quite sure. They tell you to take a, a right turn up there when they leave the left. They say, you take a right turn and they use the left hand. So you can go on having to find your own way because you realize now that they have not been told the right thing. How many times we find ourselves taking instructions from people who they themselves don't know where they're going? Amen. How many times we find ourselves as Christians taking instructions from people who have not got a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. And the psalmist he said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly man. For you to give godly advice. You've got to have a godly relationship. Yeah. Praise be to God. You've got to know the attributes of God. Amen. You've got to know who God is. Amen. You've got to know the standard of God. Amen. The requirement of God. Yes. Oh, what this woman did. She allowed herself to be in a company that had a bad thought about God. That is where she was. I think it is very important that every Christian understand that we should not, if we want to survive, if we want to maintain our Christian integrity, we should be very careful what goes into our ears. What goes into our ears, it goes on into our minds. Amen. And our minds are given to us to think. Amen. And when we think we can't sleep, we can't eat, we can't operate properly because of our thinking. Yes. And sometimes what we hear, we think about it in such a negative way that when we are supposed to act positively, we just can't. With this mind that we have, we 
have allowed it to take in the wrong things. Amen. And that is exactly what Eve did. Eve allowed herself to become a victim mm -hmm. of the devil and also had made her husband to become a victim. Yeah. And as a result of her, her parents become a victim. We are victims today. Yeah. What mm -hmm. thanks be to God for Jesus. Yeah. The Bible calls it the second Adam. Glory to God. Amen. The first Adam was earthly. He was of the earth. Yes. But the second Adam was a victim spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When the spirit of God touches the man heart, it tells him that he's got a relationship with God above. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So he's not alone. Yes. He is with the high power. Amen. We may not know who we are. But the closer we get to God and the more we hear through the Holy Spirit, we will understand how valuable we are to God. Amen. Let me look on a couple of things here about this conversation that took place between the devil and the woman. He stated to her that thou shalt not surely die. So that means that the woman started to think, no, did God tell me the truth that I shall be surely done? And last night we did look at um, it was Adam actually, according to our, how we look at it here, that it was Adam who told her what God said, because it was Adam that God spoke to. When the instruction was given, Eve was not yet made. And then, of course, Adam had that responsibility to convey the divine instructions of God to his wife. Yes. And she used the point there that God said we should not touch it. No, we should not eat of it. God only said don't eat of it. So Adam might have said to her, Here you touch the tree. But she disobeyed the instructions of her husband. Now last night I was on a point in saying something that I know that ladies don't like to hear, but the reality of it is there. And Paul wrote about it. And throughout the life of the church, we have seen where women have administered unto the Lord Jesus Christ, unto the apostles. But the Lord Jesus Christ has called 12 men. And he has prepared them. But men today have become failures. From the time that Jesus died on the cross, the men, they went back to their vision. They lost hope. They couldn't be bothered. They had forgotten what Jesus said, that he was going to be crucified and was going to be raised on the third day. But all those women, they went down to the sepulchre to embalm. I wonder how they were going to get to it. They were wondering who's going to roll away the stone to get in there to pay our last respects. Also, they might have forgotten that Jesus said he was going to be raised on the third day. Mm -hmm. But the men were not supposed to forget because they were there with Jesus when he spoke about it so many times, mm -hmm. in so many ways. But the women, they wanted to go and show their respect, their affection for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, I just say shame to some of the men of today. If we were depending on men for the church to uh, go on today, there would be no church. When Jesus Christ gave the commission, it was given to the men. And I'll tell you, they stood up. And they were prepared to give their lives. Now we come down to the point about Adam here now and his responsibility. What was the control over his wife Eve? Was Eve like one of the women of today? The society in which we are now living. There was a time when it was so difficult for a man to work in a place where the woman is the boss. But today, they are so happy to do it. 
They are very delighted about it. And so that same bossy attitude had crept into the church. Don't go quiet now. The reality of God's word is there. Paul spoke about it. And God wants to arouse the conscience of the men that are sleeping in the church. God wants to raise up man because there are duties and responsibilities that man has got to undertake. God wants a man to understand that there are weaknesses in the woman. But those weaknesses have been translated as a result of men not laying their arms. They've gone back to their fishing boats. Their old lifestyle have forgotten that Jesus Christ said he's going to build his church. The church was not yet built. And if there was nobody on the day of Pentecost, it simply means when the church was supposed to be built and the gospel was supposed to be declared, nobody would be near to do it and those men would not listen to any woman preaching. But little by little, things have been moving away from the ordinances of God because Adam had neglected his duty. Adam was nowhere to be found during the time of communication between Eve and the serpent. I want you to think about what if he was there. What would he have said? Would he have gotten hold of her and said, come on, let's go. Or he would join in the conversation and allow himself to be Last night we look on, she saw that what the serpent said to her sounds very exciting. So she took from the tree and she ate. And she gave to him and he also ate. And that is where the condemnation came. Now, when we went down into chapter 3 and we look on verse 7. And the eyes of them both were open. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed big leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now they were not supposed to have known that they were naked. And in chapter 2 verse 25 stated that they were naked and they were not ashamed. Now what that is actually saying that when the man is built up in God, there are some things that blurs our eyes. Even the eyes of our mind, we don't see. It doesn't matter. Why? Because we are wrapped up in God. Now I've got to be careful about how I'm sensitive about everything. Even when there's nothing to worry about, I find myself taking on and allowing it to be a burden to me. I must be careful about that. Because when the Lord Jesus Christ, His Holy Spirit is in the person, He tells us, He prepares us to undergo every difficult circumstance that comes our way. Because it is not by my or my power, it is the work of the Holy Spirit. And we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. That is what the church needs. And I'm not talking about coming to church and making a whole lot of noise. I'm talking about having the Spirit of God dwelling richly in our hearts. That when we come, we sing and we make melody unto the Lord. Glorify Him. Talking about the things of God. Know how to respect the presence of God. That's how when the Holy Spirit is living inside of us, it teaches us something about God, how to reverence Him. Yes, right. Now we have been talking about the Holy Spirit the other day and saying He's a person. Yes. He's in the service. Yes. And my conduct, the way I act, the things I say, is that what the Holy Spirit is saying? I've got to judge that. I've got to know the attributes of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I've got to know the things that the Holy Spirit will say, what He will not say, what He will like, and what He will not like. Oh, the devil said to the woman, 
then started to think about whether God was loving to them. What is this that God is hiding from us? What is this that God doesn't want me to know? Has God been truthful to me? The devil was trying to tell the woman, God is not dealing right with you. The devil had a spirit of dissatisfaction. Turn with me to uh, Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah 14 and picking up on verse uh, 12. Isaiah 14 verse 12. Right, let me just rush on with that. How art thou falling from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken nature? For thou hast said it in thine heart. I will ascend into heaven. Now, I, I want to believe that the, the earth was a place where Lucifer was in charge of. And the Bible says that he's a cherubim that covered, he attended to the, the throne of God. He had a very high office, great responsibility, but he was not satisfied with where he was. He wanted to be somewhere else. And that same spirit is in man today. Man cannot be satisfied with where God puts it. He want to be somewhere else that somebody else is. God said, no, he ain't going to work that way. Look what he said here. He is going to ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation on the side of the north. I will ascend above the height of the crown, I will be like the most high. That is his ambition. That is just what he wanted to be. He wanted to be like God. We read in Isaiah chapter 45 this evening that beside me there is none. And I just want to give God thanks for Jesus Christ. Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 2 of one of those verses. He stated that he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But he took upon himself a noble reputation. But what he did, he humbled himself. He had the right to be equal with God. But he humbled himself and became like what? A servant. Oh, how many of us want to humble ourselves to be a servant, do as we are told. No, I want to give orders. Everybody want to give orders for them. This is what the devil said. I want to be like God. I want to be like God. God gives the order. I want to give orders too. So there's going to be war in between him and God. When God say one thing, he say another thing. So after he possessed that personality, that spirit was formed in him, he transmitted it into mankind. And that is where we went back to Genesis. And we see where he said some things to make man begin to think. What 
better I could have been. But why did God make me this? Why he has got to have me subjected? The Lord God is saying that man is made whole. In what level? A little lower than the So the devil, they are now trying to break man up to the level of being an angel. When God had man on probation, and said you will live as long as you obey me, but the day that you disobey me, you will die. Amen. So immortality lies upon our obedience to God. Amen. And it stands today. Mm -hmm. You know, we sing the song, we shall be changed. Yes. Change from mortal yes. to immortality. Yes. In the twinkling of an eye. So said the scripture. Yes. But we've got to obey God. We've got to obey the word of God. Amen. We don't set our own condition. God sets the condition for us to follow. Amen. He set the condition for Adam and Eve to follow. And the devil made them break the order of God. Amen. He's allowing man to break the order today. But man says going to heaven. Amen. Forget it. But you know there's something I want to bring to your attention. In verse 8, after they went and they made aprons, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. I wonder what that voice walking sounds like. But you can interpret this now to be the fact that man was so privileged. Man was so fortunate to have God communicating with him. But somehow the devil made man feel dissatisfied with that he wants more. What about you and I? After the many blessings that the Lord has blessed us, the more God gives us, the more we complain. It is a spirit of dissatisfaction. We fight that in the church. If you in Jamaica, we have a thing they call contour. You know what is contour? Anybody here know what is contour? No. It is a little stone wall that they use and they would dig the earth out and pack stones to prevent when rain is falling for it to prevent the earth from being washed away the stone wall would hold back the earth so they call it contour is that right brother Clinton? okay <laughs> no what the devil, his plan is, there's a time when rain falls in such an excessive manner that it wash away contour, wash away everything. You know when rain falls in Jamaica? Rain falls. That people have to begin to pray for God to have mercy. Because rain brings disaster. And the more you pack here, is the more it wash away. And that is how the devil he works. As soon as we pacify a problem, he starts another one. Because he is a problem troublemaker. And the quicker we understand that he has got a tactic how to use on mankind, especially on Christians. Adam and Eve, they were saved people. They were sanctified people. There were people that were godly. God breathed his breath in them. They were a part of God until they became contaminated by the evil spirit. And you and I, we are no better. If we allow that spirit of Satan to control our minds, to make us become rebellious against God, 
we will find ourselves in the same category of condemnation. Thou shalt surely die. I pointed out to you that Adam lived 900 years after he broke the commandment of God. And man is going on today and breaking the commandment of God and still living. God don't kill him. But you know something, Adam died. Adam not only died physically, but he died spiritually. All right, come with me now. We see what happened in verse 9. He heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. I wonder if you have ever really noticed that. When a person lost relationship with God, with the Holy Spirit, you have no appetite for the things of God. You don't know, hungry for worship. You can't pray. You can't sing. You can't rejoice. All you're doing, you're a sad person. Because he who has made us glad, we are isolated from him. It is the Spirit of God that makes the heart of the man glad. It is the Spirit of God that gives the man the spirit of rejoicing to glorify God. David said, My soul long for God. My soul thirsty for God. Oh, you gotta be begging Christians today to come to church. If they don't get a personal letter of invitation, they're not coming. <clears throat> what kind of worship that? What kind of Christian that? What are you coming to church for? To worship God. Amen. The psalmist said, I was glad. When they say unto me, let's go to church. It was a delight to me. I'm sure nearly all of us in here come across some people sometime or the other who are rebellious against church. And I'm talking about people who are supposed to be Christians too. You know why? They are not hungry for God. They lost their relationship with Him. They hide Him. They hide Him among the trees. They don't want to hear the voice of God. They don't want the, the heart to vibrate. They don't want the word of God to touch me inside. I want to stay as I am. Don't trouble me. But God went looking for them. What happened? What in verse 9? And the Lord God called unto Adam. And said unto him, what is the rest saying? Where are you? Now in other words, I believe that there was a meeting point. There was a, a point where God would come down and meet with Adam. Glory to God, the church means something to us. The building. We come from our different homes, our different districts, and we congregate in a house. And the Spirit of God would come, and He would take up His abode. And we all would recognize the fact that the Spirit of God is here in the house. And we conduct ourselves in a way of reverence for the Holy Spirit. And we talk about reverence for the Holy Spirit. Now, if I come in church late, I still hear, and service going on, I don't have to disturb the service to come and greet you. I greet you off the church. Amen. When I'm conscious of the acts of the presence of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I don't disturb things. Amen. Glory to God. There are some of us we don't know how to keep ourselves when we come in the presence of God. But there was a meeting point. And when God came, 
have danced from outside. Oh, glory to God. You begin to dance. And when you come in, you join the happy man. And you're giving glory to God. And I'm not talking about no funny singing, no. I'm talking about singing that is being directed by the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about musicians that are playing under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It glorifies God. When you're not the tambourine, you know. You know, it is a piece of instrument that was used at the point of victory. Yes. When Miriam, yes. Miriam and the ladies, when they got over the Red Sea, yes. and they saw that fear on his horse was being drowned in. Yes. Oh, the Bible said Miriam saw the king red. And every 
every time that I go to church and I hear something being preached, I know what touched my heart. And the devil may want me to get upset about what touched my heart. But I have to tell my heart, say, God is speaking to my heart. Because if God won't speak to my heart, it means that when he don't care about me. For the Bible said, which father don't chastise his son? If your father don't chastise you and tell you, say, you're going wrong, he don't love you. So your heavenly father, he love you and he wants us to come in line. He wants us to adhere to his word. And that is why he sent his word. The Spirit of God is our leader. When revival started in the early church, 